Welcome to Dorking Out. My name is Sonia Mansfield. And look, it's not bro time. It's show time. Joining me is my podcasting sister from another mister and the co-host of Dorking Out, Margot D. Hello, my friend. They call me Dr. Love. <laughs> Best song ever to strip to. Is that your stripper song? No, but it's my favorite Kiss song. I and, get it. Uh, we'll talk about that more in, in the show. Yes. We got a request to dork yes. out about 2012's Magic Mike, which is uh, celebrating its 10-year anniversary on, the, on June 29th. So we're just like a week ahead of the game. And be warned, y'all, this is a happy hour show. <laughs> so just... Just saying. Um, it is written by Reed Carolyn. It's directed by Steven Soderbergh. You might have heard of him. And mm-hmm. it stars Channing Tatum, who I always call Tatum Channing. I don't know why I do that. Oh, wow. I do it a lot. And then sometimes he's tanning Chatham. <laughs> I'm sure he responds to everything. <laughs> he seems like an agreeable person. Uh, who's And then we got Alex... Pettifer, Co- Pettifer, yeah, Cody Horn, Olivia Munn is in there. Topless, topless, uh, Matthew McConaughey. This hey is now. hey now, okay. all right, all right, <laughs> all right, all right. All right. This, <laughs> this is right before the McConaissance started. Uh, <laughs> was it Matt Bomer? Is that how you pronounce it? Yes, he's great. Yeah, Joe Mangello. Mangianiello. Damn. Mag- that one, that one, that one was going to be tough for me. It's going to be tough no matter what. Joe. Yeah. Big Dick. Yeah. Just call him Big Dick Richie. Yeah. Big Dick Richie. He was also in that the most recent uh, Pee Wee's movie on Netflix. And he was delightful. Just saying. Adam Rodriguez is in there. Uh, let's. I had never seen this movie. This was the first time watch for me. Did you see this movie in the theater or have you seen it before this? I, I'm we've talked before. I'm not huge on the stripper stuff. I, <laughs> no? I don't No, I I just I don't know what it is. I get awkward. I get um I but I've been I've never been we so we talked about Chippendales when yeah. we talked in our What a Creep podcast about yes. Chippendales murder. So I got really into that world and then we watched this movie and yes. then, then we were you and i were speaking off the air while we were i think simultaneously watching this but yes. we were pretty close to it saying this is flash dance but it's for dudes yes and so long i didn't answer your question no i didn't see it in the theater because <laughs> i know i would go and like half the audience would be splooging in their pants and i would feel uncomfortable <laughs> they would just be sliding right off their seats <laughs> yes, and it's not that I look. I sl- you know, I go to every Star Wars thing. I have my own stuff that I get yeah. excited about. Long story short, no, I didn't, but I definitely rented it when it first came out. Mm. And I remember thinking, I'm not paying attention to this, and I'm only really excited when Matthew McConaughey's on the screen because mm. it's the McConaughey Renaissance. Yes, whatever right. the hell we call it. I don't know what we're calling it, but that's what I just blurted out. Yeah, yeah, I. It wasn't that I wasn't interested in seeing magic. Actually, let me go back. Strippers are actually not my jam either. I think we've told the story on the on the pod before right. about when I've gone to like bachelorette parties and like there's a stripper. I I I get very uncomfortable. I totally get that other people love it. Love it. I get the stage. It's, yes. The stage stuff. Honestly, yes. I've been there for not the Chippendales because no one can afford that expensive, yeah. believe it or not. But the, the, the you know, Thunder, like the East Bay version. Yeah. Or like Thunder Down Under. Thunder Down Under. Yeah. But I've seen the stuff like in Hayward, California, yeah. let's just say, right. not San Francisco. <laughs> um, and I get it when you get in a group, and especially as women, to be in a space where mm-hmm. you can just be a, a total, you know, idiot and have fun. Yes. And not have to worry about mystery or one of those PUA guys like trying to. Yes mess with your game it's sort of like the space where the it's reversed of course like it's the female gaze on men but this movie is told from the men's point of view Mm -hmm. and Channing Tatum was a male stripper before he became famous and he's he's so he's so good looking he said he starved himself and I I bet he did because there's not 
an ounce of fat on him. No. He must have just subsided on like cucumbers and And chicken breasts. And and water. water. That's it. (laughs) Dude is ripped in this movie. And like I I have seen um I saw the first step it up step step up movie with him in it. I never seen them. I've seen they're I've seen the first two. Okay. He he's he stars in the first one. He shows up for like a second in the second one. In the first one, he shows up. Dudes, he's a really good dancer. Like I yeah, I have appreciation. I I mean, I took dance lessons when I was a kid, so I completely understand the athleticism. Yes. And how much work it takes that they're not getting paid for. Yes. To make that shit happen, to rehearse, to keep your body in shape, the diet you have to have, mm-hmm. all all that all that original stuff you have to come up with to come up with something new that'll keep people excited. I have so much re- respect for all of that. So it's not judgment. It's just like. We're just like, I like watching baseball in a stadium. I'm just yeah. not so much on TV. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's just certain things we enjoy in different spaces. Exactly. And mm-hmm. I, this movie, I, so I think I, I, yeah, I texted you and I was like, is this flash dance? I know. And I was and, like, and I was I was like because phone. there are definitely some similarities to flash dance. And if you're like, what do they think of flash dance? You should go back and listen to that episode. Cause it's, it's, a, good one. it's a good one. We had a really good time with that one. Um, there he works in construction. He wants a different career. He wants to make custom furniture, but he is working as a stripper to make money to fund those things. Similar to Jennifer Beals in Flashdance, who works as a welder and is stripping at night, but really wants to be a ballerina. Like it's very similar. Right. I guess the difference is, you know, um, Channing, Channing, Channing Tatum. You know, old CT, he's not sleeping with his boss and, you know, all those things that Flashdance has. But also the numbers in the strip club are, I think the, some of them are a little elaborate with like, for a Pittsburgh water spot. Yeah. Like like in 1980, like, you know, watering hole, excuse me. Not a water spot. What the fuck did I just say? (laughs) I know what you meant. I need more wine, clearly. (laughs) The... The lighting, the music, the props, like all that. It's pretty, it's pretty outlandish. It also, that's really what reminded me of Flashdance. It's not the exact same story by any means. I think I was, that was my first impression, you know, when I was about 30 minutes into the movie. But there is more going on in this movie than I thought there would be. Because I really thought it was going to be. I work in construction and strip at night and I'm saving up because I want to start this business. And then I meet a girl I like and now I'm going to stop being a stripper. That's what that's what I thought the arc of the movie was going to be. I didn't know it was going to have these other things in it, which is like we got Matthew McConaughey like He's really, really good in this movie. He's fucking great. He's, He's so just leaning in <sighs> into that like Matthew weirdness. Mc- yeah, that weirdness of him, that like Matthew McConaughey ness of him. But like the Texas accent. Yeah. And like there's that like creep underneath. You know, it's almost like yeah. uh what's the character from Dazed and Confused? Oh, Shit. Wooderson. Wooderson. It's like Wooderson. <laughs> like it just that like just working at the club all right all right all right working at the club no the bongos tu- no touch and li- yeah plays the bongo all these things it's so matthew mcconaughey like i wasn't expecting like that part of the story because there's this whole thing about like he's going to take them out of pit they're in tampa they're in tampa yeah and he's gonna take them all to miami he's gonna buy a bigger space and the show's gonna get big and Miami and they're really going to blow up so there's this kind of is that going to happen is it not going to happen then there's this whole part where CT meets this young kid and that's Alex Pettifor and he's 19 his name is he plays someone named Adam he's like a recent college dropout and he calls him the kid and he brings him into the nightclub and uh, or to the strip club and like woos him into the business like brings him 
as his like protege and we watch him like slip into drugs and make bad choices very bad very bad, choices. Choices. <laughs> very bad choices dude if you take drugs you throw up and you wake up and a baby pig is eating your vomit that's rock bottom <laughs> like, oh. that's so gross rock bottom my friend i wasn't expecting any of that part i didn't know that was a thing in this movie i didn't remember it and i think for good and sufficient reason i just don't think we need it and i don't think this actor either it's underwritten yeah or it needs a different person Mm -hmm. it's just this is i know i'm not gonna i'm sorry i'm gonna just say what i feel no do it Danny Pellegrino, I'm just speaking my truth. I don't remember him. I couldn't even tell yeah. you what he looks like. No, that I wrote, I I wrote the same thing. Time. I wrote the same thing. I'm like, I don't know if they could have got someone with more personality. Yeah. Or, or if it's underwritten because I didn't really care about him. I didn't give a shit. I didn't believe it. I didn't care. You don't and understand a, why. Why. And I, I had a similar relationship with my own brother, which you would think would make me even more into it and it just didn't right it was very i mean because he's just was very moody he had issues with his temperament with mm-hmm. keeping a job with relationship i mean all of this is new is not you know foreign to me right and yet i still couldn't relate to it i don't know if the, and i think part of this problem from this is from 10 years ago mm-hmm. we have matt bomer in this movie we meet gay gayness here yeah we need we need some we have the guy from csi miami he's one of the strippers yeah. um what's his name a- that's uh, Ad- adam rodriguez, adam rodriguez yeah. sorry i used to love him on, on csi miami. Yeah. miami anyway he was great he plays tito but there's not enough personality between the men there's not enough about the men yeah it's really like this kid the kid is the focal point and he's the most boring character. yes he's just a cipher and i get it we're supposed to the entry is through him then we get through him into the story but and there's a lot of actors who play that part in movies mm-hmm. and we all say we need this person right because yeah. it helps us get through everything it's just the performance isn't there or it's underwritten or it's a combination yeah. of both. And it could be a Soderbergh thing because there's scenes where people just are underplaying it yeah. or they're just being supernaturalistic. And it just, I never really like supernaturalistic anyway, mm. I guess, because I grew up on old movies and yeah. I just kind of like a performance I versus think... people go, I don't know. Uh, what do you think? I don't know. Uh, what do you think? Like, <laughs> This is not interesting to me. No, this is he, not flirting, and it's not interesting. I think you're exactly right when you say like he's our he's our gateway into the world, mm-hmm. and I don't understand him. I don't relate to him. I have a hard time seeing it through his eyes. I don't because I don't care because he's just nothing to me. He's, and he's a cipher, and yeah. like just and not in an interesting way, no. and not in a useful way. No, he's just he kind of. Yeah, he should have been the Dirk Diggler. Like, we care about exactly. Dirk Diggler in Boogie Nights. You really care about him. I was really afraid for him. Right. At no point am I afraid for this guy. I'm like, uh, I, who is he does, again? Oh, he overdosed? <laughs> Whatever. It doesn't. Right. And I get it. Like, he has a sister who's, her name is Cody Horn. She plays Brooke. Yeah. And she's beautiful. By the way, everyone looks great. Yes. Everyone is gorgeous. Everyone. I mean, like I said, there must have been just like smoothies with like no dairy on that set. Like everyone <laughs> must have been doing Pilates all the time. Vegan planks, diets for all. Planks all the time, every time in between. Because they all look yes. incredible. They're beautiful. But it's – and also, I've, I don't know if you've ever been to Florida. No. My brother used to live in Tampa, my other brother. This is my brother Daryl. This is my other brother Daryl. <laughs> um, old New Heart joke. <laughs> I but love my that brother joke. Joe, <laughs> my brother Joe was in the Navy for years, so he lived in Tampa. But and I've been to Miami a few times, and there's a big fucking difference. Yeah, it's like San Francisco and LA. Like there's just a cultural di- yeah. or San Francisco and Concord. Like, yeah. Oh just yeah. A, it's a cultural <laughs> difference. It's a whole thing, and it's beautiful. Florida's beautiful. We get a lot. Yeah, you know, we make fun of Florida for their wackiness. Yes, <laughs> that happens. Seems to happen there, but it's beautiful, and I don't think anyone's ever caught it the way he did it's except for um the billy crystal movie oh running scared running scared which adam talked adam risky yeah and, yeah they talked about if this movie 
on YouTube this week. Yeah, I saw uh, that. I saw that too. Um, anyway, it catches the beauty of Florida and why people love to live there and why people want to be there mm -hmm. and all that. And this kid, it's like, okay, so Matthew McConaughey owns the club and he's giving everybody a percentage. Yes. <laughs> you know, everyone's going to get a piece of the pie. And <laughs> that means no one does, right? Because he's just, right. just talking out of his ass. And we're so much more interested in Matthew McConaughey. There's a seat. They're all straight men, apparently, except Matt Bomer, no, I think, in real life. Well, yeah, in real life, he's he's gay. But in this one, he's he's straight because he's right. got a, he's got a wife. But they're uh, they're swingers. <gasps> OK, I get it now. Yeah. yeah, I loved it when he was the Ken doll or whatever that is when he comes out of the box. Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> they have such. Well, and that's what you you said earlier about. We don't really care about the kid. They have these really great people also yeah, as dancers. Stage. Yeah. So yeah. we have him. We have Adam Rodriguez. We have, uh, you know, Rick the Dick or whatever his fucking name is. <laughs> you know, and they are really charismatic. They are really interesting. The dance numbers are super fun. Like that stuff is playing, really it's good. It's raining men. Yeah. And they're wearing trench coats and umbrellas. Yeah. I'm it. Yeah. Matthew McConaughey. McConaughey. Excuse me. McConaughey. Fuck me. Matthew. When he has that <laughs> scene where he's proving himself. Yes. Like he has to kind of put it out there because mm -hmm. somebody, you know, Tarzan got hit in the head or whatever. But he's like, I'm going to do this one more time before we move to Miami. And he does it to Calling Dr. Love by it's Kiss. so funny. It's so good. That movie turns for me just in that moment. Like I am not paying attention to anything else. The apartment could be on fire and I wouldn't know. <laughs> like it's, he's so magnetic yeah. and he looks so beautiful. He, and it's Matthew McConaughey is a beautiful man. Holy shit. He is. And that and voice. He's really a great actor. He is. He's a movie star. He is a movie star. Exactly. And he, I think that so the good. person that, I think the person that played the kid, I can't even remember his name. I'm sorry. That's so mean. Alex Pettifer. It just doesn't, he's out of his league or they didn't yes. write enough for him or he should have been different in some way, more noticeable. Yeah. Maybe a different race. I don't know. Like he's, he's just, a black person or a, yeah. I don't know. The movie's pretty white as well. It's very like, white. The audience. Yeah. I think um, Rick the Dick or whatever the fuck his name is. Uh, he's, he says, He's Armenian, I think. Um, and I right. think, and then we have Adam Rodriguez, who's, you know, Hispanic. Um, but yeah, there's no, there's no black people in this movie. It's very white and heteronormative. Yes. And yes. That's, and, and that's just the story they're telling. And that's, that's Tampa, frankly, I think. Yeah. From my memory. But anyway, so there, there is that I, there's stuff here that I really like. And there's stuff that I, yeah. I just I don't care about the kid, like anything yeah. with the kid. It just doesn't ring. I don't care. Yeah, I, I don't. He, he loses his ecstasy pills because he's an idiot. Yes. And he owes a thousand or is he owed 10,000? It turns out he owes 10,000. And they, they could have thrown him in the river for that, that point, but I wouldn't give a shit. I mean, Channing Tatum is really like, oh, man, we got to do something. And yeah. that's when they try to create some drama. Yes. But it's it's just phony. And then there's the Olive, Olivia Munn of it all. Like, <laughs> the Olivia Munn of it all. Margot was having none of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Thank Sonia. you. Thank you. I like a good pun. Me I love too. a good bad pun. Yeah, that's a really good one. Yeah, she's playing one of the, like, the thing with Channing Tatum is, like, he's he's boffing some chicks in town. Yes. And he's sort of, like, going that way through life. And then he meets Brooke. And Brooke has her brother that she really cares about that we don't care about. Yeah, we don't and care about him. But she does. And I like her. And I like her. She's great. She's yeah. sweet and she's smart and she's her own person. I mean, they're all lovely to look at and mm -hmm. they're all doing I, but I think it's like this weird mix of like the supernaturalistic acting in some scenes mm -hmm. and then there's stuff that and then they just get the stuff on stage and on stage. Isn't there a point like whether they bring out a gurney and someone's on the gurney yes. and then they're like humping her on the, Yeah, like that. And maybe that's in the second one. I haven't seen the second one. I know that is in the first one. You are right. There's a whole gurney humping thing. I watched a little bit of the second one before we started recording. So I got to see some of it. And I think the second one might have more of what we wanted in this one. 
because it is, is a good idea which is all of those guys are road tripping together to like Ugh. to like a stripper convention or something and so i made it i'm i'm probably not quite halfway in the movie but there's i mean from what i've seen of that movie and honestly what i got from some of this movie too was like you know or actually i'm going to back up a little bit so i tweeted out i'm that i was watching this movie for homework for dorking out and i was all seriously it's for homework like that's why i'm watching it <laughs> and a friend of mine reached out and her name is leah and leah hosts a show called tv on the radio on it's called bff.fm it's like a local san francisco community radio and they talk about tv on the radio that's what they do and she tweeted to me and was like i love 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 magic mike and like we had a whole like twitter conversation then we went into dms and started talking in dms and i was like why why do you love magic mike so much and she's seen the first one the second one she's really excited because it's gonna be a third one and she went and saw the live show and she's like what i love about it is she's like i don't think they're making fun of the women who are going right. to the show which, right big deal yeah she's like and she's like, and let me tell you the live show, she's like, it blows my mind. She said that it was all about consent and the female gaze. And she's like, you're given a safe word that you can say when you don't want them touching you or approaching you. They give you like phony money to give out. So there's not that awkwardness of like some people are giving out money and some aren't and you feel bad or whatever like right she right, said right. and it's a just this idea of like all these and it's mainly women she said but it's not that men couldn't be there um and it's safe and it's exactly what you said it's like they're just having fun and they're goofing and it's about the performance of it and the gaze of it and the stories they're telling and it's not about like grinding on women and embarrassing them Right. That she really, really responded to. And then in the second movie, there's just a whole thing where, like, the, you know, Big Dick Richie or whatever the fuck we're calling him. Um, <laughs> he's in, like, a convenience store and there's a cashier who's all business. Have you seen the scene? Because it kind of went around the internets for a while. And she's yeah. just, she's super serious and she's not cracking a smile. And they, like, dare him to make her smile. And he goes in and he starts just dancing and like opens a bottle of water and like dumps it on himself and opens a bag of Cheetos and throws them around and then he's like how much do I owe you for the water and Cheetos and she starts laughing and the whole thing was just about making her smile and not in a creepy way but like in and a, not making fun of her not making fun of her at all and she my friend was saying this is what clicks for her in these movies is there is like some dudishness, dudishness about it. Sorry, everyone. Happy hour show. But yeah. um, she doesn't think the women are made to be. They're not being mocked. Which is, yeah, because that does. That is the thing that happened. Yeah. Originally with Chippendales and stuff. It was just sort of like, ladies want to look at things. Ladies get what? excited about that. What? That's just for desperate women. And yeah. that's for. Right. And. And. You know, and in you know when you're in packs of your friends, these and it's all consent. Like it's yes. all everybody's in. It's like it's fine. It's totally fine. I'm glad that people now can say like, yeah, I was a stripper for a while. I did this for a while. Yeah, and it's totally fine. Yeah. I you know, it's just not something I'm completely into. But yeah, like it's we're not, not all into the same things. So. That's fine. It's not my jam. Yeah. But I would totally see a Magic Mike show, to be honest with you. Now that she said, like, all yeah. that's been said, I'm like, okay, under those conditions, yeah. My friend Kate also, you know, one of my best friends, Kate's like, look, I know you don't like that sort of thing. Because Kate and I went to that bachelorette party with the stripper where I hid behind a house plant. And we also went to Thunder Down Under, where I also tried to hide behind a plant. Um, <laughs> Kate's like, I know you want to hide behind plants. She's like, but the Magic Mike show is actually really fun, and I think you would like it. And I'm like, mm, I'll plunder that. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> is it in Vegas? That's where you go? I think she saw it in Vegas, yeah. But I haven't been to Vegas in a long time. I would actually go back to do stuff like this. Uh, I might go back to 
I haven't been back to Vegas in a long time. It would be fun to go back a l- now a little bit older with maybe a little bit more money in my pocket. Not to gamble because right. I don't necessarily want to gamble, but to eat at all those fancy restaurants and stuff. And see the shows. That's what I would yeah. do. Yeah. I saw Elton John there. It was so Elton's rad. great. It was Elton's so rad. Amazing. It was yeah. when Celine Dion was on her break and he was filling in for her. My sister and I had a blast. It was so fun. But we're talking about Magic Mike. Right. So that's pretty much the plot. It's yeah. just sort of, you know, Channing Tatum brings this kid in. The kid fucks up for a little bit and the kid kind of sees his ways. They're going to move to Miami. There's good looking guys. There's segments where they're they're army. They're dressed like the army. Yeah. Like, right. And there's a scene with Matthew McConaughey is just playing on the bongos, playing, you know, because remember when he was caught. Yes. Naked, which I'm like, that would have ruined his career. And like nowadays, everybody just kind of like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Meh. What are you going to do? That's what he does. Some people, That's what he does. Some people get naked and play bongos. What are you going to do? He wasn't hurt. He was anybody. in his home. He was in his home for Christ's sake. I know. So. Ugh. But anyway, he's yeah. great in this movie. I really like that that Magic Mike, so that's our friend CT, uh, and the sister, Brooke, I like that they actually get to know each other. Like, they, yeah. actually, they actually talk. Imagine that. And um, they both want this, you know, they do both want to take care of her brother. I'm a little confused at why he's still living with her when he's making a shit ton of money. And like buying cars and shit, and he's still like sleeping on her couch, but whatever. That's yeah. fine. You gotta let some shit slide. Um, do I buy that Mike and Brooke would actually still hook up at the end after all of this? I'm not 100% sure I buy that, but it's cute. Yeah. It's cute. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's CT, he's very handsome, he's very he's, charming. He's a great dancer, too. And he's such a good dancer. Dude should be making only musicals. He's really good. I think what there's a movie I saw him recently where he was tap dancing. It was a Coen Brothers movie. I oh, think. oh, Hail Caesar. Yeah, yeah. He's really good. Like, he's yeah. super, super talented. I, you know, it's good looking men dancing. There's some, there's, there's doing Genuine Pony, that song. I mean, <laughs> there's that scene there's, is so famous. Even it is. I'm it's, like, I knew that before it even happened. I was like, I know that's happening. That's good. I mean, and yeah, and I we've all been. I don't know if you've ever been to. Did you ever go to a a club where there there's men, men a strip club for men or strip club mm. for women? Sorry. Yes, I have been to a strip club for women where, I think I told this one on here too, where I was one of the only women there, and I went to use the restroom, and it was also their dressing room. No, no, that's the no. I mean, a, a strip club. Not for, oh. for for women, so their men are dancing. Sorry. I have not been to that, but I have been to th- like I said, Thunder Down Under, but not a strip club where men are dancing. No. Yeah, it's yeah when people bring in their their friends and it's the bachelorette party or yes. it's somebody's graduation party. That's exactly what happens. Some chick is wearing a crown or you know, yes. and yes. it's kind of a thing everybody does together. And like, yeah, that's what we do. It's our night to go crazy before we know if our friend's gonna make a debt bet. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> You're hilarious. But, it, but it's fun it's it is part of the fun yeah and some and some women love it they don't mind being in a chair with a guy grinding all over them and no good for you do you know? if that's what you're into my lady go for it or go my dude or my dude whatever or your dude whatever yeah just wash your hands afterwards that's all i ask yes Look, just just you know wash your hands practice good hygiene y'all yeah, when we did our Chippendales episode, I was looking at stuff from the seventies, and they were just full on making out with women, if not just humping them on See, the floor. No, 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 no. Don't do that. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, there's some funny stuff where they're teaching the kid the ropes of things, and like Mike takes him shopping and introduces him to like the world of thongs. And, uh, you know, and he's like working out with Matthew McConaughey and he's learning about pelvic thrusts and stuff. I actually think I would have liked, once again, less drug use, more yeah. stuff like that. That stuff was actually really interesting to me. Maybe I just McConaughey. need McConaughey. Yeah. Maybe I just need a documentary about male strippers. Maybe that's maybe. what I'm looking for. But yeah, I do. Like you said, I like a lot of the other characters very much. I just I the kid kind of pulls me out of it every time. 
it's and that's the Soderberg of it, like trying mm-hmm. to make it kind of serious. Like yeah. he just doesn't want to make a just make a trifle, you know, a stripper movie. And it's like you're allowed to make a stripper movie. You're allowed to have fun, I dude. Mean, you made a lo- you made Ocean's Eleven. You can have fun. <laughs> that's one of my favorite movies too. Ocean's Eleven is Great movie. fucking rad. Like, yeah. I think that we as a country can all get together and agree that Ocean's Eleven is fucking rad. It's a uniter, not a divider. Exactly. It. I mean, it's a perfect heist movie. It's super fun. Yeah. Only a monster wouldn't like that movie. Correct. <laughs> I'm like, what else? Did I? I'm going through all my notes. Oh, there was a scene where... So I think it's after the kid is overdosed. One of those times. I don't remember. Um, and... Mike comes to the apartment to look for him and he's not there and he's talking to Brooke. And I really like that scene actually because Brooke and Mike have not kissed. They're not romantically involved, any of that, but they obviously have a connection and they know it. And she just, I don't know. I think Brooke is a really interesting character. At first I was like, why is she so angry all the time? (laughs) It's like, she seems so mad, but then she says to him like i don't really like this lifestyle i don't want to be a part of it but if you believe in believe this and this is what you want to do she's like good luck to you bye yeah. and i don't know i just think a lesser movie would have taken a different path I, with with her i don't think he's talented as a furniture designer like he thinks he is mm. like he's gonna make a whole bunch of the furniture he wants to make i like i did appreciate the scene in the bank yeah where the woman there obviously recognizes him from the club the mm-hmm. from the bank and then he shows up and his credit rating's not great but he has all this cash on him yeah and he's trying to show her like this is my business plan and this is how it's gonna like he wants to do something more respectable mm-hmm. i'm just making that in air quotes of course it's yeah. respectable living but i do like a, i do like like here's somebody's just trying to do the best for themselves and use what they have that mm-hmm. they know they can make money and invest in their future and there's things that could be in your path to stop you yes there's just there's some really good stuff in here i think you and i agree though i think the kid kind of pulls us out yeah. of it every single time yeah, Matthew McConaughey is like the key for me, but it also Channing Tatum is amazing. Yeah. And it's his, it's partially his story, so it should be. Yeah. Matthew McConaughey was nominated with like he won like critics awards, he like all kinds of like review boards gave him stuff. Like this was everyone was like he might actually get an Oscar nomination. For, this was before he actually won an Oscar, by the way. Every, like a year before. Yeah. yeah. So every, a couple of years before. Like it this is what started the McConaissance. <laughs> this is what this movie I think kind of I felt like he was on a downturn or he wasn't doing things that were connecting with people. And this really did. And he's really good. And I probably should look up like who was actually nominated for an Oscar for supporting actor that year, because I doubt they were as good as Matthew McConaughey was. Well, I was telling you, I was listening to the, I used to listen to Slate podcast spoiler specials. And what they do is they take a movie and they just spoil it, basically. And they talked about this movie and the Dan Coyce was the writer and the pod, the person on the show. And he's like, if he doesn't get nominated, I'm going to murder somebody. And I was like, (laughs) so I immediately went to IMDb and looked it up like, yep, nope, he didn't, he wasn't nominated. Yeah. But he won like a few years later. Yeah, he won like the following year for Dallas Buyers Club, which is a whole other movie to yes, talk about sometime. Yes. I'm actually I'm looking at best supporting actor and that was the year that Chris Christoph Waltz won for Django Unchained. Okay. And I'm like, eh, yeah, okay. But that, the, I mean the other people nominated, I'm like I don't know, you you could have put Matthew McConaughey in here. It's like Alan Arkin for Argo. I like Alan Arkin. I, I do too. Robert De Niro for Silver Linings Playbook. Never saw like, it. I'm like, I think that movie's good. I'm like, he's fine. I don't think I'd put McConaughey in his spot because I wouldn't give up Philip Seymour Hoffman for the master. I Maybe he oh, could take yeah. Tommy Lee Jones spot for Lincoln. 
But Link, he was good in Link. I like Lincoln, actually. Yeah. I'm like, it's maybe. But yeah. he could have been yeah. in there. Yeah, totally. That's what I think. Anything else to say about our friend's Magic Mike? Call in Dr. Love? No, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So before we get into our top tens, let's uh, take a break. And we'll be, be back with all that. Welcome back. Would you like to hear the top 10 movies of 2012? Yes, please. We have never done 2012. so No, this is great. It's so new. Woo! So number 10, Men in Black 3. Not good. <laughs> it is not, not good. Number nine, The Hunger Games. It's fine. I read the first book, never saw any of the movies. Oh, they're, they're pretty good. Yeah. I actually think I will. I know I will watch them. You know, I should probably say this. Uh, I had a very little baby in 2012. So I didn't go to the movies very often. <laughs> okay. That's so, your, that, yeah, that's a totally good excuse. Yeah, I think I saw two maybe three of these in the theater uh number eight madagascar three never saw it no hmm seems like something you'd see right away margo <laughs> number seven the amazing spider-man yeah okay did you this is the ones with andrew garfield right yeah he's not my favorite yeah they're fine okay number six the twilight saga Breaking Dawn Part 2. No, thank you. <laughs> I That's saw, a hard pass. I saw the first Twilight and I was like, it's not for me. It's not good. Nope. Nope. There is a woman on TikTok, though, that is showing all the Twilight movies to her husband and filming his reactions. And it's fucking funny as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, Ice Age Continental Drift. No, sorry. No, wow. that's another one. I swear <laughs> you would have seen right away. Uh, actually, I probably saw all these four, the top four in the theater. Number four, The Hobbit. No. no. it's. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I saw it in the theater, but I didn't like it. I didn't like this one either. The Dark Knight Rises. It's okay. It's not. I liked Anne Hathaway in it, actually. Yeah. She was my favorite part. Yeah. This one's good. Number two, Skyfall. In the Skyfall. Oh. Is that Adele? Who yeah, that yeah, one? yeah. Yeah, that's a good movie. That one, I really, really like that one. I liked I liked all of the um, I, Daniel Craig, James Bond movies. I love Craig, yeah. yeah. With the, even yeah the, the swim trunks. Yeah, even Quantum of Solace that people are like, Pfft. I'm like, I like that one too. I like them all. Is that the last one? Uh, no, the last one was No Time to Die, which I, I really liked. I love that one. Yeah. yeah. And then number one, The Avengers. Which Avengers? There's been so many. <laughs> no, just the first one. Who was in that? That's the one with, um, you get Captain America, Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, the Hulk, and shit. <laughs> the, the scarlet johansson black widow black widow okay yeah the, so it's the movies you know, I no get it's them the mixed it's up. the first one where everybody gets together well i like the avenger movies Me I, too. I yeah I, I mean i have the disney channel i put them on sometimes yeah. just i just can't i like all the captain americas i like him a lot those are my favorite oh yeah they're good the um first captain america is one of my favorites yeah same like, here i love the like 80 1980s niche of it the way it feels feels old school to me i don't know i just really really love that one my favorite 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 of the marvels though i still love guardians of the galaxy that one's my favorite it's a good movie i have a, an emotional connection to that to those characters and i get very protective when they get hurt <laughs> I don't like it. Even Chris Pratt. Even Chris Pratt. He can't ruin it. Yeah. Even they could they could have put Jack Black in there though, and that would have been like, but that's okay. I like I like those movies very much. 
Do you want to hear about the top songs? Yes, I do. So number 10. So this is June 23rd, 2012, 10 years ago. Rihanna, where have you been? Okay, I, like I, I know that one. <laughs> yeah. Usher Scream. I don't know that one, but I know who Usher is. <laughs> the Wanted, Glad You Came. Don't know don't any know of that. The, you just said stuff in another language to me. Florida, Wild Ones with Sia. Uh, actually, I might know that if you played it, maybe. Uh, yeah. Maroon 5, Payphone with Wiz Khalifa. Okay, I know that one, too. I know that one. Fun, We Are Young, that song you couldn't escape no, from. No, that was everywhere. Another one you couldn't escape. Nicki Minaj, Starships. Yes. I, still, I like Starships. Me, too. Oh, the song drives me nuts. One Direction, What Makes You Beautiful. <laughs> That's not my... Uh, one no. Di- one Direction, um, Justin Bieber songs, those were not my thing. I love this one. Carly Rae Jepsen, Call Me Maybe. I love that song. It's, it's a great song. That's a really... It's like a perfect pop song. It truly is. And... Number one song, this is another one you couldn't fucking get away from. Uh, Gautier, someone I used to know. <laughs> used to love, excuse me, whatever. <laughs> what I remember about, by, by the way, that song is really, really good. That's a good song. It's just, it was everywhere, but it's a really good song. But um, we had just moved into this house where I currently am recording from. And across the street, they were having a bat mitzvah. And... Mm-hmm. Um, all the kids were having a little dance party and they were singing this song. And I thought it was a very strange song for a bunch of like 13 year olds to be singing, about. <laughs> like, like group singing and like jumping up and down. It's like, now you're someone that I used to that. Like, I was like, dude, you're 13. <laughs> it's what? one of those songs that like catches your attention when you first hear it. Yeah. It just has its own kind of vibe. And then I, K Fog over like everybody yes. overplayed it and they still yeah. play it, I think, too much. I love it though because I love he's like, Gosh, what happened? How come she doesn't talk to me anymore? And then you get her point of view, and it's like, Oh, because you're a huge dick, <laughs> yeah, because you're a fucking weirdo stalker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's such a good song. What else are you dorking out about, Margo? They they brought back to Apple Plus for All Mankind, Ooh. which is a show I like sci-fi shows and i like shows that play with history and mm-hmm. it's sort of like what if this person were president versus that person were president and things change i don't know i just really like it and the second season just started and then there's a documentary i saw there's on hulu there's a person that has a documentary called the deep end and it's a guru named teal swan and it's a huge fucking bummer oh uh, okay she's such a narcissist and she's very abusive to the people around her i i it i couldn't even make it through the last episode because she's so mean to one of her old boyfriends who finally has the guts to leave her but she has like she's a guru she has people who follow her and i just i i get skeevy about people like that so i'm just kind of warning you Mm, especially at the end He's really into his tropical fish and he tries to travel with his fish and his fish don't make it. And that for some Aww. reason just sent me over the edge. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to watch another minute of this. Aww, I can't. Oh, that makes me so sad. Oh, it's so sad. So I'll change it for you. Okay. So Hulu, there's a show called I Love That For You. <laughs> I, and I, I watched the first couple episodes of this one. What is her name? Sorry, the, the star. Um. Oh, shit. I know it's got Molly. From Sh- SNL. Yeah. Vanessa... Shit, I'm gonna look it up. Uh, I look know it up. has it has uh, Molly Shannon. I love it has that. Has Molly Shannon and Jennifer from Blackish. Um, Vanessa Bayer. Vanessa Bayer. She, Thank you. She is so funny to me. Like her. That's a true story. Her whole like her background. Like she was a kid. She had leukemia. Oh, I didn't know this. Yeah, she wrote a book about it when she was little. She was young. She spent a lot of time in the hospital, and she almost died. I did and, not know this. Yeah. So when she got better, she just threw herself into acting and comedy because she's like, fuck it. What? You know, yeah. who knows who's going to make it, who's not. And that's part of so that her character is someone that in the in 97, they were in the hospital for like a year 
on and off doing treatments for leukemia, for cancer. And so she gets addicted to QVC and HSN yes. the shopping channels and she starts buying from them. And she's very manipulative. She manipulates the hospital, like the people who give her cookies and shit like that. And then when she grows up, she gets an audition to be on that channel. And Molly Shannon is somebody, and I used to be, I don't know if I told you this, I used to be hooked on those channels. I would buy stupid oh shit. Oh my God, you're, name, you're hilarious. My roommate had to have a talk with me because she's just like, <laughs> packages show up and I bought a box of sponges once. You are and so funny. I spent like $50. And this is like, I did not have $50 to waste on my, sponges. My One of my good friends, Michaela, her mother was super into the shopping network. And she bought for me off the shopping network um, this sweater. It was like real ugly like oh. it was like movie themed right so it had like the slate for like hollywood like action like that sort of thing on it and yeah. it was like black and white and it had palm trees and like a movie camera and a slate on it, it was this ugly like cardigan thing and uh McK like she gives it to me for christmas like i got you a gift too sonia and it's a sweater and i was like thank you i love it so much and Michaela's like, she doesn't love it, mother. She's never going to wear it. Blah, blah, blah. Like, stop buying things off QVC. And every time I saw her mother for like a year, I put, I wore that sweater. I put it on. You're and a I, good person. And I was like, I don't know what Michaela's talking about. I love the sweater. It's my favorite. I wear it all the time. And Michaela's like, you're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you are. I would get, okay, so there's two people who are good salespeople. Suzanne Summers mm -hmm. and Sylvester Stallone's wife, Jennifer Stallone, oh. had a beauty product. And I would, honest to God, I would drink and watch this and then order things. I had to like get my credit cards. I had to get like credit card debt that I had to get like refinance. And my roommate oh my really had to have a talk with me. And she's just like, I'm yeah, Max. Like, Max, right? Damn right, it, Max. Max. But yeah, I bought a box of like sponges and she's like, what are these sponges? I'm like, they're supposed to be really great. She goes, what do they do? I'm like, yes. they pick up liquids. <laughs> like, I'm just like... Can you please tell me that Sylvester Stallone's <laughs> wife's product was a bra and it was code called Cobra. Oh, you are so brilliant. No. Damn, I would have no, bought one. Sorry, Max. Sorry. It was, yeah. Max <laughs> were is all. Tango and cash. <laughs> Mango. Right and left. <laughs> Max is all boo, boo to that joke, Sonia. <laughs> she would sell these cosmetics, like it's skincare. It was actually skincare, and this stuff was crap. But she was so good at selling it that I'm like, well, I want to look like her. And it's like, well, she's beautiful, and yes. she probably has like treatments and yes. spa treatments and shit. Whatever. I'm not blaming her. She's a, she's a good salesperson, but. It, Vanessa talked Bayer was like addicted to these shows. So she created this show where her character is trying to make a living as a seller on those, on that show. And Molly Shannon is someone who's been there for 30 years. And it's like really great. I love Molly Shannon Me too. Like, who, by the way, I want to recommend Molly Shannon has a book. It's uh, an autobiography and it's on, um, I'm going to look it up right now. It's really good. I got the audio book, but it's just really, if you're looking for a comedy, like, 20 22 minutes yes it's good it's, it's really really good you've been watching it too i watched the first two episodes it's on my on my hulu list and i think it's really great i didn't know it was a true story i definitely related as someone who also like had cancer and like then was like fuck it i'm gonna host podcasts too like because i listened to all these podcasts while i was recovering and then was like i'm gonna do that too so I, there, I found something to connect with when I watched it. And I just, I think Vanessa Bayer is really funny. And, She's so funny. And I love it. Like, and she played a character like this in Trainwreck too, where she gets nervous and she just, her smile gets bigger and bigger. <laughs> like the more nervous she gets. And it cracks me up every time. Uh, Molly Shannon's book is called Hello, Molly. Because of course it is. Yeah, of course it is. And she's wonderful. And she's, it's just really fun to watch like how the show works from behind the scenes. And there's a guy named David on QVC who has like a, a show where he sells food stuff. And this is a big gay guy from the South. And just like the same thing, like, I want to buy a tin of those cookies because they're going to be just as good. Like you can make your own goddamn cookies at home and <laughs> they, they'd be warm and fresh and everything. But some of these people are good salespeople. They are. And anyway, it's true. It just, 
It just makes me laugh. Yeah. Anything else on your list? No, that's it. Okay. I'm done. I finally finished the staircase. And what do you think? I he's fucking guilty. <laughs> he's so but I already knew that going in, but I still I didn't there were stuff at the end that I didn't know. Like I think it added some things that the documentaries don't give you. So I like that. I don't know. I'm like, are those things true? I would like to think they are because I'm hoping they're not making up fiction about real people's lives at the end. But it, it was, it's so well done. That whole thing is so well done. Like everyone in it is so fucking good. And the music is so good. And like, it's really, really good. It It didn't change my mind. No, but it did for me too. It kind of like, cause I also, that's another thing I was watching that, that teal swan yeah. video. And then I started watching the original staircase mm -hmm. and then something else. I'm like, this is just bumming me the fuck out. Yeah. That's why I had to put on. Yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, he's been complaining about his portrayal by mm -hmm. Colin Firth, which he claims he didn't see, but he always thought Colin Firth was boring. And why didn't Brad Pitt play him? Oh, and I'm fuck like, you. Fuck you. You should be so lucky as to have Colin Firth play you. Colin Firth right. is fucking handsome. -ish. He's fucking handsome. I would hit that. I would smash. We would smash that. And that's the original and the only Mr. Darcy, as far as I'm concerned. He's so handsome. Yes. The best. Have you seen the, by the way, have you seen the, speaking of Jane Austen, have you seen the previews for the new Persuasion that's coming to Netflix? I haven't seen it, but Dakota Johnson's in it, right? Yeah. I'm gonna, I like her. Yeah, me too. I'm definitely going to watch. She's great. Yeah. I, I like her. Me I, too. I think she's very, uh, she's got some, she's got some star quality about her that I find very appealing. I think so too. She, she has a new movie out that I have not got to watch yet. It just came out on Apple Plus and it's like, um... Oh, shit. Cha-Cha Real Good. Is that what it's called? Cha-Cha. Mm -mm. Shit. Arr! Sonia. Nah. Damn it. Wine. Cha-Cha Real Smooth. Thank you. Cha-Cha Real Smooth. It is on Apple Plus and I am going to watch that. So I finished the staircase. I am all caught up on Below Deck Down Under. <laughs> Below Deck Down Under? Yes. Did you love it when the drug kitsch trunk chicks showed up in the captain's lair oh like my the god they're so <laughs> trashed <laughs> they're so trashed they're going iceberg straight ahead. there's all just this the it's like oh, i, I think one, we're so. two episodes so this episode is the penultimate episode for the mm -hmm. season and it's just a a whole group of like women and i think one gay man and mm -hmm. they're fucking trashed they just drink the whole time they can't even taste the food I they're know, just like the poor chef is stressing yeah oh my god it's so fucking so funny. funny i just was laughing out loud so i am all caught up i'm also watching Ru rupaul's drag race all stars which continues to renew my faith in humanity on a weekly basis it's just a fucking delight because it's an all-stars one and it's previous winners. So they've all won before. So they're they're all just there to have fun. And it's just it's just joy. Like yeah, watching them. Like I love it. And then the uh last thing I was gonna mention was the um disaster movie watching continues here mm -hmm. at in the Mansfield house. We watched Godzilla. 2014 have you seen this one with brian cranston no i saw the one with matthew mccon not my matthew broderick sorry <laughs> sorry the yes wrong matthew. that one is terrible I, it is terrible i have not shown him that one i showed him this one because our listener jennifer moline tweeted to me and she was like godzilla 2014 takes place in san francisco calvin might be really into it because we had also watched the towering inferno from 1974 <laughs> right. which by the way is fucking rad like we had such a good time with that but so i was like we should watch godzilla calvin i think you'll like godzilla movies so we put it on it's so bad it was so bad i can't believe that it played in the theater i i actively disliked it they just can't get godzilla right i i don't know why they I think they think we're going to super care about the people and I never care about the people. <laughs> no, no. King Kong's been 
pretty interesting to cover. But Godzilla, except like when I was a kid, when they had the really shitty ones. Those are the ones that I like. I like those better. Me too. Me too. Like the newer ones, I just can't. No. It's a big lizard. It just doesn't yeah. appeal to me. Yeah. And this one was directed by Gareth Edwards. And then he went on to direct Rogue One. I love Rogue okay. One. I think that yeah. movie's super dope. And this one has some like beautiful shots, like certain shots where I'm like, oh, my God, that's so pretty or what an interesting shot or something. But in general, I was like, again, there's a lead character in that movie. I don't give a fuck about him. I've forgotten the actor's name. I don't remember anything about him. His wife is Elizabeth Olsen. I remember her because she's Elizabeth fucking Olsen. Like, that's why I remember her. I don't remember him at all. He means nothing to me. I've totally forgotten. Brian Cranston is in there at one point. Um, everything's filmed in the dark, so you can't see what's happening to cover the anim- the to cover the monsters fighting. I was like, "What the fuck are we even doing? <laughs> like, what are no, we doing? Me. What are we doing with me. these movies if you can't see the thing you went there for, which is to watch Godzilla fight other monsters?" Like, what are we doing? I, I, you've got me. I, even no like, answer. Even like something like Pacific Rim, where it's like, we're going to have these giant robots and they're going to fight each other, but we're going to f- set it in the dark in the rain so you can't see anything. It pisses me off, basically. Um, Calvin was like, that's something to watch, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, I'm glad I didn't pay for it and that I just rented it because I don't think he's ever going to ask for it again. So on that list, I recommend The Staircase and RuPaul's Drag Race. (laughs) (laughs) But if you but my point of bringing up Godzilla really was if you have other like disaster movie recommendations for me. Yes. Send them my way. For a 10 year old. Yes. Yeah. For a 10 year old, by the way, like because he's he's really into it. And if they have any kind of San Francisco connection, even better. Like he really likes seeing his his city in movies which I do too, but I'm, I'm always looking for recommendations. So please tweet them to me, whatever you like, I'll take them. So this was fun. I'm really glad that somebody said magic Mike. I'm great timing. I think they recommended it because we did the Chippendales murder over at what a creep. (laughs) You know what? That makes perfect sense. But th- yeah, there's a lot of male stripper energy in yeah. our universe. Yeah, but I'm glad we did it. it. It gave me an excuse to finally see it, and I'll finish that second one. And shit, maybe I'll see the third one too when it comes out. Go Why not? Crazy. Yeah, fuck it. Go nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Where can people find you on the internet, Margot? You can find me at Brooklyn Fitchick, mostly for Twitter and Instagram. And my site is brooklynfitchick.com. I'm going to be changing Mm -hmm. that. If you go to my pin post on Instagram and Twitter, I have a book that's on for pre-sale. Yes. Um, We'll be pumping and and promoting that as we go along. And uh, you can find me on the Tic Tac. Tic Tac. Tic Tac. Tic Tac. I need a Tic Tac right now. Actually, my (laughs) mouth is dry. Uh, Tic Tac at Margot Donahue. Yes, everyone pre-order her book. It's called Filmed in Brooklyn. Thank you. I can't wait. I'm excited. You can find me at thesoniashow.com and The Sonia Show on Twitter and Instagram. And sometimes I post on Facebook. And if you like the show, you can find us at dorkingoutshow.com. You could give us a review wherever you listen to your podcast. That would be awesome. And if you want some stickers or you have requests or anything, you can email us at dorkingoutshow at gmail or you could tweet to us. You could write on our Facebook page, whatever you like. We love requests. This is super helpful. It's it's less work for us when y'all make requests. Yeah. (laughs) So thank you. Thanks for talking about Magic Mike with me, Margo. Well, and thank you. And if you like the sound of our voices... Check out our show, What a Creep, yes. where we talk about creeps from the past to the present. We talked about the Chippendales murder, and we talked about reality creeps in our for mm-hmm. 16th episode that just came out, and that was really fun. That was super fun. And I'm not going to share who our next creep is going to be yet, because I haven't narrowed down, but I haven't <laughs> decided. Should we tell them about the next turkey out? Yes. It's going to be Legal Eagles. <laughs> Because we want to give you our love touch. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe.
we just end it 